Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the launcher that's built into One UI. Now, we already have that on the Galaxy S10 line of devices, but if you're receiving the One UI update to let's say the S8, and S9, uh, the Note 8, or even the Note 9, you should be able to enjoy all of the features that I'm gonna cover for you guys today within the built-in launcher. This is TK, let's go ahead and talk about the One UI launcher. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified whenever we push out new videos on the channel. So what we have in front of us is the S10 Plus, the S10 and the S10e. All three are running the stock launchers right now. I do have another video coming out comparing the stock launcher to let's say Nova Prime. Uh, but the main difference of course is the ability of being able to use gestures. So on the S10e I basically have no gestures added other than the default one which essentially is if I swipe on the background in any direction it takes me directly into the app drawer and another swipe takes me back home. But on the S10, swiping up takes me to the app drawer, swiping up again takes me back. And if I swipe down, it opens up my notification panel. So there's a way of customizing it. The S10e also has some gestures built into the actual fingerprint sensor, and that's very, very nice. So depending on the device that you're getting, you're gonna receive a little bit of a different experience. Now on the S10 Plus here, of course, I have the same functionality that I have here on the S10. And the reason behind that is we're able to actually customize some things built into the actual UI. So let's go ahead and go home and we'll actually press and hold on the background. If you press and hold on the background, the options come up at the bottom. First one is wallpaper, themes, which take you pretty much to the same app. And then of course we have widgets and of course home screen settings. Home screen settings takes us down to the bottom. We can see that we're running the about home screen, which means is this is the One UI home. This is the default launcher built into One UI. So if you're trying to use this on any other device, unfortunately it will not work. These features are pretty much made specifically for Samsung devices running One UI. So if you have the S8, the S9, Note 8 or Note 9, and you receive the update directly to uh, One UI, you should be able to use all of the features I'm covering for you today. First and foremost is the ability of customizing the lock screen or the home screen style. By default, it comes out with an app drawer, meaning I actually have the ability of swiping up and going into the app drawer. Now that by default is, is the actual standard one. So you notice right there, it goes away. You're able to switch it over to no app drawer where all your applications sit on the home screen. So if I hit apply here, let's go ahead and go home and go settings. Uh, what you'll notice essentially is I no longer have the ability of swiping into the app. This is more of an app search. But if I scroll, all my applications are sitting directly on the home screen, which is again, depending on your preference. So if you like that, that's something that you can do. Most of the US uh, users for the most part, and specifically me, I like to have an app drawer. So I'm gonna put it in. I'm not showing the actual app drawer button, meaning I don't see a button here that says app drawer. If you want to show that, you can actually go home, go settings, and then you see right there an app button. If I click that, go home, you'll notice there's a new button here that kind of bumped up my camera. And essentially this is the way of getting into the app drawer. This is very reminiscent of the old style of launchers, but if you don't really care too much about this, my recommendation would be is just to take that button out, go into settings, remove this button, go home, bring the camera back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, and of course, just keep it customized in that way. It looks really nice and it has a lot of good functionality. So depending on how you like, you should be able to basically enjoy it there. Now we have the ability of changing the grid size directly on the home screen, all the way from four by five to five by six. And that's what makes our icons go smaller. Because we have the ability of shrinking the size of the grid line to be able to fit more things, I'm actually able to change. And you can see a preview of how it looks depending on how you change it. For me, this is the setup that I like as I like to have all my icons, well, all my icons set up on the bottom and have some space so that the wallpaper looks great. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit cancel here. We have the ability of doing the same thing for the app drawer. Again, you can see some previews of what they're gonna look like. Definitely very nice, very easy. The app button that we talked about was pretty much just what it is. It adds a app button for us to be able to just show that. On the bottom of the screen, you'll notice I have three different styles of gestures or navigation process. On one end, I have the standard one, which takes me just basically the recents. I can go home, I can press home, go back into the settings. I have the ability of using gestures here. I can swipe in, go in, launch the Google Assistant. Or of course, I have this little hint option right there. Now, this is done specifically by going into your, into your actual toggles on the top and turning on navigation bar. So if I turn it on, uh, we'll go ahead and keep my full screen gestures, say done. You'll notice right there, turn it on and you'll see the navigation buttons come back. And you can customize them within lock screen. Uh, well, good luck. I can hide it and it'll go back to basically similar to here. And I can even go in deeper into the settings and actually disable the ability of showing the hints. So you see right there, gesture hints. I can disable that and that goes away. Again, more options to be able to make things a little bit better. Very, very nice. We'll go back home and we'll go back into the settings tab. Uh, the next thing here is the app icon badges. That's something that's really cool. So it gives us the ability of seeing the icon badges. So these little options, this little uh, tick option here that tells me that there's a notification sitting at the top. And not only that, you can actually customize it so that you can see what the notification is at the top of the screen. So right there, I have maps sitting in there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit and touch home 
you notice it gives me the option of being able to go home or go to work. Those are again built in. Uh, I can go into Instagram and if there was a notification for Instagram sitting up there, I would be able to see that. Uh, let's go ahead here and I think if I'm not mistaken, I think we have one from Instagram right there. You can see here's the notification. It's sitting directly within the actual button. I don't have to open it up. Now, if I go ahead and swipe it away, I can swipe away all of them. It does take you away from the top and gives me access to basically just clean up my notification without having to go all the way to the top of the screen. We have the ability of locking the home screen layout, adding an app to home screen whenever we install a new one, quick open notification panel. That's the ability of initiating that swipe functionality. And you notice right there, I don't have that turned on because I use it with the gestures on top on the right side. So depending on how you do it, on the S10e, you don't have to show it because you can swipe on the fingerprint sensor and it does the exact same functionality and you can customize that directly within the settings. Uh, we have the ability of rotating obviously landscape mode that's just whenever you turn the device to the side so let's go home here and you turn the device right now the launcher doesn't actually rotate with you so if you press home you go to settings you scroll down and say rotate go home the launcher will readjust and you have the basically the same layout that you had before but more adjusted for the sideways view so just keep that in mind it's a preference uh, if you don't want it to rotate just don't turn that feature on and the launcher will stay where it is uh, the last option we have here is the ability of hiding applications and that's specific to let's say you're going into a carrier you know you got a device from a carrier there's some bloatware there that you can't uninstall but you can't necessarily just leave them sitting around so what you can do essentially is just scroll through finding applications you do not want to show an example i'm going to go in here i'm just going to say magic ar is one of them uh, i'm going to say legend is another one and i'm going to say apply and for the most part at this point if i go in there and look for them these applications are not in my launcher and if I want to bring them back, I go back into settings, go back into hide apps, and I would unhide them from this option. And they'll go back and I'll say apply. Very easy, very simple. And it, this is basically very functional too, because it also hides it from your app drawer. So you don't have to worry about seeing it there anymore. Now the next couple of things may be a little bit basic for some of you guys, but just as an example, if you're wondering, how do you move applications directly from the app drawer to your home screen? So an example would be here. If I'm, I'm touching on the email, you notice right there, in the past, we used to get a, a preview of our lock screen or our home screen. For us now, to be able to do that, what we do is scroll all the way to the top, it takes us back home, and I'm able to put it where I'd like it to be. So that's how you move an app directly here. There's a couple of ways to create a folder. You can either create a folder by just using the application, hovering over another application, and trying to get it really set up correctly. And if that doesn't work for you, the only other option you have, which is really functional, is press and hold and say select item. And I can select as many items as I want, and I can actually create a new folder with them or remove from home meaning I can just do a much faster, much simpler way of organizing my applications. An example, say, I would say create a folder. It created a folder, I can give it a name, and I'm gonna go home. You notice right there, everything got cleaner very fast and very easy. It's also very nice to be able to see that if you press and hold, uh, lock on it, you can either remove it, disable it if it allows you, or even uninstall it. And of course, if you have update, go in there and check that out. Another cool feature here is that if you swipe up and you touch the top option, it will show you the most recent applications that you were looking, as well as the ability of seeing the most recent searches that you've done. You also have the ability of using voice for search, and you can go in there and go into settings. This takes us back into directly just the specific part of the uh, settings tab for our app drawer. We can manage our application, add finder if you want to be able to turn that on, customize services, as well as show suggested app. That's the one thing I showed you. The other thing, of course, is that if you go into the Recents app, you see some of the Recents applications that you were running. And we also have the ability of customizing our Recents app depending on what you're using. You can download GoodLock 2019 and you can actually customize it using the ability of going into the applications here. So we have some applications, Navstar, Multistar, Clockface, Routines. All of those things are customized, well, customizable really. And of course, nice catch, hide, uh, you know, edge uh, touch word there, sound assistant, which is really, really functional. And it just gives us the ability of going in there, clicking that little button, and then of course, customizing the audio experience, depending on the application that you're in there, open up the EQ right away from the home screen without having to jump into it. So a lot of cool functionalities that you can do directly within the lock screen. Now let's go into the actual customizations when it comes to theming. So if I press and hold home, I'm actually able to go directly into wallpapers or theme. If I go in there, it's again, the same application. Wallpapers and themes are within the same app now, as well as icons in the always on display. Uh, what I do have the ability of doing so, of course, is going to the settings tab, go down a little bit, and then of course we can go to wallpapers and themes. Again, same way, it gets us exactly where we want to get. Uh, the main thing about this is that you can download your themes and carry them over with your account. So an example for me, here is basically all the themes that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and go view all. You can see all of the ones that I have downloaded on my device or that I, that I can download, but I've purchased in the past. The ones with the download logo obviously are ones that I've purchased, but I don't have them on this device. Now here you can see that whenever you have a theme, you can update them. You can see the different updates that are available for them. I'll click that one again and I'll say update. 
If it has an update, it will not allow you to apply it. It only allows you to apply it when you have it ready and ready to go. The default ones, if I click that, you notice right there, it gives me the ability of applying it. I don't want to do that yet. Here, I can actually preview what it kind of looks like and what it actually is intending to do. And can I hit apply? If I hit apply, it will overwrite my existing theme and you can only have one theme at a time. The lock screen itself is customizable when you can customize it with any kind of live video the way I have it here. And this essentially is I went to my actual uh, gallery application and just said apply and I applied it as a lock screen wallpaper. Very nice, very easy. You just need to basically set it up and put it in. You can put obviously a, st a static image, a live wallpaper or even a video of your own. And of course, you can download more icons, icon packs and you can go to view all. You can sort them and see the ones that are basically the top ones and then you can say all you can say all free ones so you don't necessarily have to be looking at all the paid ones and you can download them try them out and save them to your device and the same thing with the always on display as all three of these devices support the always on display it's very nice to be able to customize it not only just within the standard application but also with a nice little either clock or different notification option that you have now the last thing you probably are wondering is what happened to bixby home so if i swipe from the left here i don't have that if i swipe from the left here i don't but if I swipe from here, you see that it does actually open up. And that's because one of the other options we can do by pressing and holding home is the ability of customizing the basically home screens that we have. So you notice I have an additional one here. There's nothing here. I can hit the plus sign and it'll add a new one. Or I can go ahead and the trash button and it'll delete whatever home screen I have. So if I didn't want this one, I can do that. But one of the other things I can do if I swipe all the way to the left is the ability of seeing the Bixby home. Now, I have it on here and I have it off here which means if I don't want to interact with it, I can just basically keep it this way. And anytime I swipe to the left, I don't have Bixby Home. But if I do want that, I can just swipe from the left and turn it on. And of course, we have the ability of double pressing here to turn on Bixby. This is Bixby Voice. And I've also remapped Bixby button to be able to launch the Google Assistant for me right there. Again, there'll be a video for this and all linked in the description below. Uh, but the level of customizations that we have here are amazing. So the ability to basically, if you like to always get into your app drawer, just do it this way. If you like to be able to open up your notification panel, do it that way. You can use the gestures that we have built into the actual uh, phone here directly with the S10e. The last thing we're going, to, we're going to talk about is widgets. And widget searching and installing is pretty simple now. We just basically hit the home button as I showed you before, press home and go to widgets. It's the exact same thing on all three devices. Now, if you're like me and you have like a gajillion worth of widgets and you want to find the widget that you want, you can actually go straight into the search. Again, either use your voice or start typing part of the widget. So for me, I wanted to look at the HD widget. That's something that I always use. A lot of people ask me and I'm able to find all the different sizes that they have and of course customize it. So for me, I usually like to use this one. This is the four by two and it'll find space for it on my home screen and then I can go in there and customize it. I like to use Cairo as an added uh, an add on to it. So I go into Cairo, I customize it this way and I'll say yes. So for me, if you've seen any of my videos in the past where I'm showing Nova Prime, let's go ahead and move uh, Need for Speed here. And you always see my uh, lock screw, well, my widget here, or the camera, the actual uh, weather widget, as well as the alarm widget. So I'm able to click it, it takes me directly home, into it. And of course I can click here and it'll take me into the weather. It just depends on your preference. And of course, when you're done with it, you can either resize it, which is typical of what we now have, or removing it from home, takes everything back there. This is by far Samsung's best launcher to date. One UI offers us a lot of customizations and it definitely permeates with directly within the launcher. We can definitely customize the ability of how the swipe works on our S10 and S10 Plus. Of course, we have that gesture built into the S10e and that's unique there. But if your device is receiving the One UI update around, you know, around the S8 line of devices, Note 8, Note 9, S9, you should be able to get all of these features directly within your built-in launcher as soon as you update that uh, operating system. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think? And if I missed any of the features that you guys love to use. Now I know there's the ability of having that secure folder and the ability of having multiple applications, let's say, you know, multiple accounts for Facebook, but that's not necessarily built into the launcher because you could use that if you're using a third party launcher. Today's video is mostly focusing on the built-in One UI Home, of course, part of One UI, either 1.0 or 1.1 from Samsung. Like and subscribe as usual and share this with any of your friends that may have picked up a brand new Galaxy S device or just received the One UI update and would like to know a little bit more about the built-in launcher that we have. I'll see you guys in the next video.